Somebody died today. He was between 20 and 30 years old. He was a member of the Muslim community. He used to wear okay clothes. He used to smell pretty nice. And that is all we know. My brothers and sisters, this is an example of a death of the average person in the Muslim community. All we know about them is what we saw about them in terms of their appearances, the type of clothes that they wore. Perhaps we knew their name. Perhaps we may even have known their age. But in reality, we don't know too much more about them. And thus, as easily we were forgotten in this world while we were alive, we are forgotten even after we pass away. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala poses a rhetorical question in the Quran. هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِّنَ الدَّحْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا That was a not a time upon mankind where he was not even worthy of being remembered. Now I want you to think about this, subhanAllah. You lived on this earth for 70 years. And when you pass away, you're only remembered for a couple of hours. What a shameful life that would be. That is a life that you don't want to live. It's not the way you want to leave this world. We're not saying that you want to be remembered for the sake of being praised. But you want to be remembered for the sake that you had an impact on the people that you were around. I want to share a story with you. This is a story of one of the Imams of Hadith from the second century. His name was Malik ibn Dinar. Malik ibn Dinar, he writes his own story. He says, I was a young man of 19 years old and I used to commit every single sin possible. I used to drink, I used to steal, I used to kill, I used to commit zina, any sin that you can think of, I used to commit it. And one day, while I was walking on the streets, I came across a beautiful young girl, no older than five years old. When I saw her, something happened to my heart. Something told me that it was time to change my ways. So I went home and I prayed. I said, Oh Allah, what is this feeling? What is happening to me? So I decided that at that time I would start to change my ways. I decided to get married. Lo and behold, nine months later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants me a beautiful young girl named Fatima. Fatima became the coolness of my eyes and the warmth of my heart. I used to love her, I used to play with her, I used to take care of her. And one day, while I was sitting on the chair, I was about to take a drink of alcohol. She came and sat in my lap like she used to do. And she started to play with my beard. And as I was about to take a sip, she hit my hand and the glass went flying away. I thought to myself at that time, had it been anyone other than Fatima, I would have struck their neck. But Allah had placed so much love and mercy in my heart for her, that I couldn't do anything except for embrace her and kiss her. And that was the day that I stopped drinking. Time goes on, I'm becoming a better individual, I'm changing my ways. And along this journey, Fatima is becoming more beloved and more dear to me. Fatima now turns five years old. She reminds me of that beautiful young girl that I saw on that street that helped me change my ways. But at that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tried me with a trial so great, it was as if no one on the planet had been tried with such a trial before. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took Fatima away from me. She died. I went into depression, I became sad. I didn't know what to do. So I started to drink again in hopes that the pain would go away. I used to drink and I used to drink and I used to drink. In the nighttime I would drink so that I could pass out during the day. And during the day I would drink so that I could pass out during the night. 
And one day when I passed out during the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed me a vision. The day of judgment had begun. And as I arose, other people arose as well. And there was chaos everywhere. People were running, yet I had no idea what they were running to or what they were running from. And as I started to run with the people, I noticed that I was the only individual that had a giant black snake right behind him. The more I ran, the quicker I ran, the quicker the snake came. So I ran and I ran and I ran until I came to the foot of a mountain. And I saw this old man with a beautiful white beard and beautiful white hair and beautiful white clothes. But he was very old. So I asked him, old man, for the sake of Allah, please help me against this snake. The old man replied, I am too weak and I am too feeble. Perhaps if you go on top of the mountain, you'll find someone to help you. So I went to the top of the mountain, I ran and I ran, and the snake is just behind me. And as I get to the top of the mountain, I look over the valleys and I see the hellfire. People being burned, people being punished, people being persecuted. And I knew it wasn't what I wanted, I didn't want to be there. So I ran back down to the mountain and I see the old man again and I scream at him again, old man, for the sake of Allah, please help me. And the old man again replies, I am too weak, I am too feeble. Why don't you run towards the hills? Perhaps you will find someone to help you. So I started running again. I run towards this greenery that I know it doesn't belong there. And as I'm getting closer, I'm starting to hear the playing of children. But I can't make out what they're saying. And as I get closer, I start to make out the words. The children are saying, Oh Fatima, go and help your father. Oh Fatima, go and help your father. I think to myself, could it be Fatima, my own beloved daughter, the one that had passed away? And as I get closer, the silhouette of her shape starts to become more clear. And I can make out that it is actually Fatima. And her arms are wide open, waiting for me to come and embrace her. And I get closer, and Fatima takes me in. With her right hand, she embraces me, and with the left hand, she pushes the snake away. At that time, I couldn't make sense of what was going on. Where had I come? What was happening? So I asked her, Oh Fatima, what is happening? What is this place? She said, Oh my father, come and sit. And we sat down under a tree. And she came and sat in my lap. And she started to play with my beard, just like she used to do in the dunya. So I asked her, Oh Fatima, please explain to me what is happening. She says, Oh my father, this is the day of judgment. That black snake that you saw, those were your evil deeds. They had become so many, they had become so strong, that if it hadn't been for me, they would have destroyed you today. That old man that you saw in the white clothing with the white beard, with the light on his face, those were your good deeds. They had become so few and so little that they would be no avail to you today. O oh my father, has it not come time for you to change your ways? She recited a verse from the Quran. She said, Alam amanu an That has the time not come for the hearts of the believers to be moved by the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that time, Malik ibn Dinar, he woke up. He wakes up and he hears the adhan of Maghrib going off. He makes wudu and he hurries to the masjid. And as the salah begins, he hears the imam reciting again. Alam ya'ni lilladheena amanu an taqsha'a quloobuhum bi dhikrillah. That has the time not come for the hearts of the believers to be moved by the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Malik ibn Dinar, he prayed his salah and he knew 
that a new life for him was about to begin. And that is what he decided to do. Malik ibn Dinar, he turned out to be the individual that he used to come in the middle of the town center and he would tell the people in the middle of the night, O oh people, wake up to the remembrance of your Lord. O oh people, wake up to success. People would think he was crazy. Why would he do this? But he knew that ultimate success lied with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. He was an individual that one day in the middle of the night, a thief came into his house looking to rob him. In the middle of the darkness, the thief is searching around with his hands to try to find anything that he can get. And in Salah, Malik ibn Dinar, he grabs his arm and takes him into Salah with him. So Malik ibn Dinar is going down for Ruku, he's pulling down the thief with him. Salah finishes. Malik ibn Dinar turns to the thief, he asks him, what did you come to steal? The thief says, I do not want any trouble. Please just let me go and I won't take anything from your house. Malik ibn Dinar, he tells him, I will let you go on one condition, that you pray two rak'ahs with me before you go and I promise not to turn you in. The thief agrees, he goes and he makes wudu comes back and he starts to pray with Malik ibn Dinar, Allahu Akbar. They pray, they finish two rak'ahs. Malik ibn Dinar tells the thief, you can disperse, you can go now, you're free. The thief asks Malik ibn Dinar, can I pray with you some more? So they pray some more. The time for Fajr comes, Malik ibn Dinar tells him again, you're free to go, leave. The thief asks Malik ibn Dinar if he can accompany him to Salatul Fajr. They go to Salatul Fajr. They come back. Malik ibn Dinar, he asks him again, you're free to go. Why are you still here? The thief tells him something and this really shocked my mind and boggled my mind when I read this. The thief turns to Malik ibn Dinar and he says, the right of a Muslim upon another Muslim is that if he asks him to be a guest, he has the right for three days. And when I read this, I thought to myself, SubhanAllah, look how much ilm the thieves had at that time, <laughs> that they're narrating hadith. <laughs> it really shocked my mind. So Malik ibn Dinar, he ex ex accepts him as a guest for three days. And for three days, this is how their lives continued, fasting during the days, praying during the nights. And after the third day, the thief finally decides to leave. He goes back to wherever he came from, and all of the thieves around him, they're anxious. They want to know, what did you steal? You were gone for three days. You must have come back with a lot of loot, with a lot of treasure. He tells the thieves, I came back with the biggest treasure possible. However, I went to rob someone, but he robbed me instead. The thieves were like, tell us who he is. We'll go and kill him. We'll get the treasure back. The thief tells them that, this is a treasure that you cannot see. It is a treasure you cannot touch. It is a treasure that you can only experience. They asked him, what are you talking about? He says, I made the mistake of going to the house of Malik ibn Dinar. He caught me. He taught me to pray. He taught me to fast. He taught me to wake up in the middle of the night and remember my Lord. I went to steal the most treasurable thing that he had. But he took my most prized possession, my heart, and he gave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now I want you to think the story of Malik ibn Dinar has many, many other stories of what a great individual he became. One of the leaders of the tabi'een of his time. But how did this individual get to such a state? Every individual has a turning point in their lives where they can become better people, or they can become worse people. A conscious decision of which way you want to go, towards Jannah or towards the Nar. And you'll see that this decision that you make is not just a decision that will impact you alone, but it is a decision that will impact everyone around you as well. Because when a person stands up to go towards paradise, he goes towards 
a paradise that is filled with many, many people. Meaning that the path to paradise is not a thin and narrow path that a person walks alone with, but it is a path that he leads people behind him. He leads people behind him. And this is why the Prophet wasallam he told us, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٍ That all of you are shepherds on a path. And each and every one of you will be questioned about their flocks, will be questioned about the people behind them, the people that you were responsible for. Now the life of this world, it makes you think that you're an individual and you live an individualistic life. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create our religion like this. He created our religion in such a way that we're meant to enjoin the good. Whatever good people are doing, we join them in it. And we forbid the evil. If we see people doing any form of evil or munkar, we stop them from it. And thus, flocks of people will either go towards paradise or flocks of people will either go towards the hellfire. Now I want to suggest five things for each and every individual in this room, starting with myself, of how we pave the road to paradise. How do we leave stories behind the likes of Malik ibn Dinar? It starts off with a simple question. How do you want to be remembered after you die? If you look into the seerah, one of the most beautiful stories that we see is a story of a man who never met the Prophet ﷺ. It is the story of a man who was born a Christian. It was the story of a man who the only real recognizable thing that he did in his life was that he was just. When he passed away, it wasn't a messenger that came to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and told him that he had passed away. But rather it was Jibreel alayhi salam. He came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says, مَا تَلْيَوْمْ رَجُلٌ صَالِحٌ that today a righteous man has passed away. The Prophet wasallam he turns around to his companions and he says, Sallu ala akhikum fa inna liyoma mata rajulun salih. That pray upon your brother, for indeed today a righteous man has passed away. Does anyone know who that man was? Has anyone figured it out? He was a Najashi radiallahu an. A companion of the Prophet وسلم, a man who was given a privilege that very, very few people are given. Being testified by Jibreel and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he was a righteous man. Being testified by the Prophet وسلم, that he was a righteous man. Can you imagine having such a privilege that when you pass away, people remember you by that he was a righteous man. And it's not for the sake of the people, but it's the recognition from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the recognition from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that when you meet the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the river of Al-Kawthar, do you not want the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say, O oh Muhammad, O oh Abdullah, no, may Allah reward you and grant you the highest of paradise for all that you did in this dunya. Do you not want to see the smile on the face of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of how pleased he is with you on that day? Something you want to strive for and long for. Are you tired of all these annoying ads on YouTube? Are you worried that a haram video might pop up? Well, the One Islam TV app is here to solve these problems, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is 100% free of any ads and is safe to browse for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest or drive with your device switched off. Watch videos on demand or download videos and watch offline. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran learning videos, stories of the prophets and so much more. Two to four new videos uploaded daily, insha'Allah. 
One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means a small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for you as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku so you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.